Today has been a long time coming. It's been one of the best days in months, maybe even a year, for most of the Chinese tech giants. We've got JD up around 13.5%, Alibaba up 6.5%, Pindoor up 18.5%, Tencent up 10% just today alone. Now, let's not forget, of course, these names have been demolished in the past sort of three to six months off the back of the regulatory crackdown. We've been over all of that in a lot of detail. But it's interesting to see a sharp rebound in, you know, almost all of these names today up, you know, double digits, apart from Alibaba, all up double digit percentages, even without, you know, any change in the regulatory landscape. In fact, we even had a new data protection law that was passed in China, uh, supposedly set to target big tech names, but that is according to the media. So take that as you will. And I think it's fair to say that data protection laws are pretty much accepted as the norm nowadays, even in our Western country. So no issues to run over there. But why are these stocks rebounding so aggressively? And what could it mean for the future? Yes, there may have been a realization that these names were oversold. And I hope that is the case. But if we look at what happened overnight this week, we had JD.com last night report some explosive earnings showing the markets that the crackdown isn't affecting the economic tailwinds that they have at the moment. Pinduoduo also reported some strong earnings. They missed on revenue, but they showed their first ever quarterly profit as a company. So that's a positive. And interestingly, they also pledged one and a half billion US dollars, yes, US dollars to the Chinese farming and agricultural sectors. So that probably could be seen as a political nod or pleasing the Chinese government to try and keep out of their line uh, of fire, but it definitely is something to know and investors liked it. So all of these things have obviously combined together and the markets have decided that there's a buying opportunity, finally decided there's a buying opportunity with some of these Chinese tech names. But so why is this of any importance? Really, daily moves in the market don't mean anything, do they? And although uh, that is true, the recent spur of positivity off the back of strong results reflects my overall thesis with most of the China tech names, and mainly including you know, Alibaba, JD, Tencent, etc. And the thesis is that the regulatory pressures they're finding themselves under are not there to prevent the growth and success of their business. Instead, they're there to serve as rules of best practice and fair treatment of customers in a rapidly expanding internet sector. Now, JD even said this on their investor call. They said they believe these policies were not intended to restrict or suppress the internet industry, but rather create a fair and orderly business environment to promote long-term and sustainable development of these industries. They believe the regulatory goals are conducive to JD's long-term business growth. So far, our business maintained steady growth while committing to best compliance practices. Like JD notes, the underlying economic growth in China and the internet sector is not being affected by this regulation whatsoever. And therefore, businesses are continuing to grow in the manner that they and investors originally expected. And for JD, you know, we saw, which was probably the most standout thing, annual active customer accounts increasing 27.5% to 531 million annual active customers. That's 115 million added in just a year's time. Now, they also added 34 million in this quarter alone, the highest quarterly addition in the company's history, 34 million by the way, is just over 50% of the UK population. They did that in just one quarter. Now, that doesn't look like a company that's close to slowing down. Revenues grew 26% just in the second quarter year over year, and they've done 39 billion US dollars in one quarter alone. Now, it wasn't long ago, but comparing that Amazon were doing a similar number on a quarterly basis. And we're talking about a company in JD that has 7.5% of Amazon's market cap. And I think overall, you know, this is something that's reflecting the Chinese internet industry as a whole. Alibaba, by all accounts, I also thought posted good earnings. I did an updated analysis on Alibaba after the latest earnings uh, on my Patreon page. So you can go and check that out if you're keen to know more. We had Tencent also posted some decent earnings too. And I think if we do continue to see this sort of continued strength in fundamentals, it's only a matter of time before you know the stock prices need to start catching up. They can't just go to a P of five or ten. That would be ridiculous for companies growing 
at the pace that they are. And I think we can all agree that these businesses, you know, have a lot of double digit growth left in the tank, but also have some of the widest moats in any business in Asia and even the world. Imagine trying to, you know, for example, recreate JD's vertically integrated business model that they now have, where they have every corner of the value chain and their ecosystem controlled. They control uh, the products, the quality, the delivery, and the warehousing, and they span the entire country. It would be you know, almost impossible at this point, unless you had tens of billions in, in funding to lose up front, to compete with the likes of JD. It would be impossible to replicate at least in the next decade. So that gives you know JD a clear path to continue growing for the next five to 10 years. And there's a lot of growth behind this company. The same goes for Alibaba and Tencent in their respective internet ecosystems as well. They all have big economic tailwinds and the businesses are definitely there to stay for the long term. And now I don't want to get into the valuation. I mean, I'll probably focus on just JD and Alibaba here. Um, but it's just interesting to see that even after you know a 10% lift, sometimes 20% lift in this stock price, we still have it as undervalued on a conservative or, or, or bearish case scenario just running over the jd.com one and this one you know i think it's really interesting just after the recent earnings because here i have a fairly conservative forecast for jd they're growing their top line at you know uh, 25 to 30 percent looks like that will continue they think it's going to continue they've probably already hit or close to hitting uh, my full year 2021 revenue target of 133 billion We've got them growing at around 15% into 2025, which is obviously conservative given the growth rate we have at the moment. Profit margins, you know, they're around about 3% if you take out some of the uh, uh, extraordinary items that we've seen in 2020, some of the uh, securities gains and things like that. We'll take them out. You know, realistically, Amazon's retail business, that was always a, a close to 3 to 4% operating margin. I think long term, we can get there with JD, 3 to 4%. That's where they see themselves being as well. Maybe even better uh, as we have some of the advertising business you know, start to grow in revenues versus the pure retail and product revenue business. But that aside, what I want to show you uh, is obviously the value that that gives us down here. So you know, even with this really conservative scenario, I'm showing an intrinsic value for the business, for the operating business at $130 billion today. And that's discounted back at 15% discount rate. So, you know, you could say that's a high discount rate reflects the risk of China and the environment at the moment. I think it, it more than does. That shows this stock is 10% undervalued. But what's also interesting and shows you that there is a lot of upside, especially in this top line revenue number as well, is if you compare Amazon and JD and their statistics, basically their key KPIs, what drives the value in these businesses. And that is their average revenue per user and the amount of active customers they have on an annual basis. Back in 2019, for example, Amazon had $752 as their annual revenue per user, and that was on a user base or customer base of 310 million, right? It's a lot higher than that now. I don't know what the average revenue per user is anymore or the active customers because they've gone beyond 233 billion in revenue per year. But if we compare that, with JD at the moment, they've currently got 550 million active users as we saw, but their average revenue per user is only $222. Now this is obviously because e-commerce in Europe and the US is a lot more developed. People are spending a lot more money on e-commerce, on the likes of Amazon. But you know that could soon change. That is the reason why that underlying economic growth in China, uh, the growth of the middle class, the GDP per capita growth, is such a big and important thing for these companies. Let me just take an as if here, you know, or a five-year estimate to demonstrate how their revenue could, you know, almost double or triple in the next four to five years. All we've got to take is 50% of Amazon's average revenue per user. So it grows to around $370, you know, per customer per year is spending that on JD.com for their retail and e-commerce needs. Now you couple that with let's say 10% annual active customer growth. They're currently growing customers at around 20% per year. So we're saying it will slow down to around 10%. They reach 800 million in active customers, which isn't you know, a massive task considering the population of China is 1.4 billion. So they're taking around 60% of that population as customers. That will give them an annual revenue of $302 billion in 24, 2025. So 50 billion higher than what I've got them getting in 2025. So that shows a lot of upside potential and why my growth rate might be a bit conservative. But still, 
we have an undervalued stock based off of those metrics. Alibaba, quite the same thing. I haven't got the uh, active user numbers there uh, and the key drivers, but like I've said on many occasions, this is definitely an undervalued stock, especially now we've dipped down to $170. I can't quite believe it's gone that low. A market cap of you know, $450 billion. I never thought I would see that with Alibaba, especially with the numbers that they were putting out in the past sort of year to two years. But of course, you know, my mouth was watering. I did buy some more Alibaba during that period. And with Alibaba, the IRR distribution or distribution of uh, likely investment return scenarios almost looks too good to be true. Now, we've got the base case here that you've just looked at, essentially giving us an indicated 40% IRR. That's with obviously the stock price more than doubling, almost tripling during that period. That's 25% earnings growth and a 22 times PE. And then you combine that with the free cash flow earnings that they're going to be earning and they're going to be throwing off, essentially given to us as uh, shareholders. Even the bearish case, a 28% annual return. That's only with 17.5% earnings growth and an 18 times PE, which is where it is now. And it's, you know, worst sentiment in years or maybe even ever. Worst case scenario is where it gets really compelling. So we still get an IRR of around 19%. That's with 12% earnings growth and a PE of 15, just because of how much cash the business is throwing off relative to how cheap the stock is. You know, they're already doing a buyback of around three to 4% per year with the excess cash that they have, excess earnings that they're generating because they believe the stock is cheap. So in terms of an investment perspective or investment return perspective, the risk reward here is really compelling. And so although I think I've gave you know, a good account of these companies, I would say again, just play it safe. Of course, there's a lot of volatility in these Chinese names. They'll probably go down uh, again tomorrow on some of the latest news. So keep that in mind. But do keep in mind also that if fundamentals carry on, even with a continued discount to valuation, you know, we're probably going to see a good IRR in these names. Therefore, in terms of a investment return uh, point of view, the risk is relatively low and the upside is very high. And of course, this is just my opinion. If you feel the risk here uh, is a risk of total loss of capital, then, then you need to either stay out of it completely or just position your stock accordingly. But I tend to think that that scenario uh, is too low a probability to lose sleep over and not be invested in these companies. And so that's about it for this video, guys. Just an update on China, update uh, on why they are soaring today and some of the good earnings that we saw from the likes of JD and some of the other companies. I will leave a link to the Patreon in the description if you want to go ahead and check that out. Like I said, I did an earnings update on uh, Alibaba and some updated analysis. Also looked at Proterra uh, and we're looking at some other companies on there that I'll probably analyze and put a Patreon only video out on as well. So go ahead and check that out if you're interested. I'll leave a link in the description. But apart from that, if you wouldn't mind leaving a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Let me know in the comments below what you're doing about all of your Chinese stocks and if you're happy with the recent surge in prices. As always, I will see you all in the next video. Good luck with all of your investments.